The Diary of Samuel Pepys, 1661, May. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicole Lee. The Diary of Samuel Pepys, 1661, by Samuel Pepys. May, 1661. May 1st up early and baited at petersfield in the room which the king lay in lately at his being there here very merry and played us and our wives at bowls then we set forth again and so to portsmouth seeming to me to be a very pleasant and strong place and we lay at the red lion where hazelrig and scott and walton did hold their council when they were here against lambert and the committee of safety several officers of the yard came to see us to-night and merry we were but troubled to have no better lodgings second up and mr creed and i to walk round the town upon the walls then to our inn and there all the officers of the yard to see me with great respect and i walked with them to the dock and saw all the stores and much pleased with the sight of the place back and brought them all to dinner with me and treated them handsomely and so after dinner by water to the yard and there we made the sale of the old provisions then we and our wives all to see the montague which is a fine ship and so to the town again by water and then to see the room where the duke of buckingham was killed by felton sixteen twenty eight so to our lodging and to supper and to bed to-night came mr stevens to town to help us to pay off the fox third early to walk with mr creed up and down the town and it was in his and some others thoughts to have got me made free of the town but the mayor it seems unwilling and so they could not do it then to the pay-house and there paid off the ship and so to a short dinner and then took coach leaving mrs hayter there to stay with her husband's friends and we to petersfield having nothing more of trouble in all my journey but the exceeding unmannerly and most epicure-like palate of mr creed here my wife and i lay in the room the queen lately lay at her going into france fourth up in the morning and took coach and so to guildford where we lay at the red lion the best inn and lay in the room the king lately lay in where we had time to see the hospital built by archbishop abbot and the free school and were civilly treated by the maister so to supper and to bed being very merry about our discourse with the drawers concerning the minister of the town with a red face and a girdle so to bed where we lay and sleep well fifth lord's day mr creed and i went to the red-faced parson's church and heard a good sermon of him better than i looked for then home and had a good dinner and after dinner fell in some talk in divinity with mr stevens that kept us till it was past church time anon we walked into the garden and there played the fool a great while, trying who of Mr. Creed or I could go best over the edge of an old fountain well, and I won a quart of sack of him, then to supper in the banquet-house, and there my wife and I did talk high, she against and I for Mrs. Pierce, that she was a beauty, till we were both angry, then to walk in the fields, and so to our quarters, and to bed. Sixth. Up by four o'clock, and took coach. Mr. Creed rode, and left us that we know not whither he went. We went on, thinking to be at home before the officers rose, but finding we could not, we stayed by the way, and eat some cakes, and so home, where I was much troubled to see no more work done in my absence than there was, but it could not be helped. I sent my wife to my father's, and I went and sat till late with my Lady Batten, both the Sir Williams being gone this day to pay off some ships at Deptford, so home into bed without seeing of them. I hear to-night that the Duke of York's son is this day dead, which I believe will please everybody, and I hear that the Duke and his lady themselves are not much troubled at it. Seven. In the morning to Mr. Coventry, Sir G. Carteret, and my lords, to give them an account of my return. My lady, I find, is, since my going, gone to the wardrobe. Then with Mr. Creed into London, to several places about his and my business, being much stopped in our way by the city train-bands, who go in much solemnity and pomp this day to muster before the King and the Duke, and shops in the city are shut up everywhere all this day. He carried me to an ornery by the old exchange, where we come a little too late, but we had very good cheer for our eighteen pence apiece, and an excellent droll too my host and his wife so fine a woman, and sung and played so well that I stayed a great while, and drunk a great deal of wine. Then home and stayed among my workmen all day, and took order for things for the finishing of their work, and so at night to Sir W. Batten's, and there supped, and so home and to bed, having sent my lord a letter to-night to excuse myself for not going with him to-morrow to the Hope, whither he is to go to see in what condition the fleet is in. Eighth. This morning came my brother John to take his leave of me, he being to return to Cambridge to-morrow, and after I had chid him for going with my will the other day to Deptford with the principal officers, I did give him some good counsel and twenty shillings in money, and so he went away. All this day I stayed at home with my workmen without eating anything, and took much pleasure to see my work go forward. At night comes my wife not well for my father's, having had a foretooth drawn out to-day, which do trouble me, and the more because I am now in the greatest of all my debt. 
i will also return to-night pretty well he being gone yesterday not very well to his father's to-day i received a letter from my uncle to beg an old fiddle of me for my cousin perkin the miller whose mill the wind hath lately broke down and now he hath nothing to live by but fiddling and he must needs have it against whitsuntide to play to the country girls but it vexed me to see how my uncle writes to me as if he were not able to buy him one but i intend to-morrow to send him one at night i set down my journal of my late journey to this time and so to bed my wife not being well and i very angry with her for her coming hither in that condition ninth with my workmen all the morning my wife being ill and in great pain with her old pain which troubled me much because that my house is in this condition of dirt in the afternoon i went to whitehall and there spoke with my lord at his lodgings and there being with him my lord chamberlain i spoke for my old waterman pain to get into white's place who was waterman to my lord chamberlain and is now to go master of the barge to my lord to sea and my lord chamberlain did promise that pain should be entertained in white's place with him from thence to sir g carteret and there did get his promise for the payment of the remainder of the bill of mr creed's wherein of late i have been so much concerned which did so much rejoice me that i meeting with mr child took him to the swan tavern in king street and there did give him a tankard of white wine and sugar and so i went by water home and set myself to get my lord's accounts made up which was till nine at night before i could finish and then i walked to the wardrobe being the first time i was there since my lady came thither for i found all alone and so she shewed me all the lodgings as they are now fitted and they seem pretty pleasant by and by comes in my lord and so after looking over my accounts i returned home being a dirty and dark walk so to bed tenth at the office all the morning and the afternoon among my workmen with great pleasure because being near an end of their work this afternoon came mr blackburn and creed to see me and i took them to the dolphin and there drank a great deal of rhenish wine with them and so home having some talk with mr blackburn about his kinsman my will and he did give me good satisfaction in that it is his desire that his kinsman should do me all service and that he would give him the best counsel he could to make him good which i begin of late to fear that he will not because of the bad company that i find that he do begin to take this afternoon mr hayter received for me the two hundred and twenty five pounds due upon mr creed's bill in which i am concerned so much which do make me very glad at night to sir w batten and sat a while so to bed eleventh this morning i went by water with pain mr moore being with me to my lord chamberlain at whitehall and there spoke with my lord and he did accept of pain for his waterman as i had lately endeavoured to get him to be after that mr cooling did give pain an order to be entertained and so i left him and mr moore and i went to gray's inn and there to a barber's where i was trimmed and had my hair cut in which i am lately become a little curious finding that the length of it do become me very much so calling at my father's i went home and there stayed and saw my workmen follow their work which this night is brought to a very good condition this afternoon mr shepley moore and creed came to me all about their several accounts with me and we did something with them all and so they went away this evening mr hayter brought my last quarter's salary of which i was very glad because i have lost my first bill for it and so this morning was forced to get another sign by three of my fellow officers for it all this evening till late setting my accounts and papers in order and so to bed twelfth my wife had a very troublesome night this night and in great pain but about the morning her swelling broke and she was in great ease presently as she useth to be so i put in a vent which dr williams sent me yesterday into the hole to keep it open till all the matter be come out and so i question not that she will soon be well again i stayed at home all this morning being the lord's day making up my private accounts and setting papers in order at noon went with my lady montague at the wardrobe but i found it so late that i came back again and so dined with my wife in her chamber after dinner i went a while to my chamber to set my papers right then i walked forth towards westminster and at the savoy heard dr fuller preach upon david's words i will wait with patience all the days of my appointed time until my change comes but methought it was a poor dry sermon and i am afeard of my former high esteem of his preaching was more out of opinion than judgment from thence homewards but met with mr creed with whom i went and walked in gray's inn walks and from thence to islington and there eat and drank at the house my father and we were wont of old to go to and after that walked homeward and parted in smithfield and so i home much wondering to see how things are altered with mr creed who twelve months ago might have been got to hang himself almost as soon as go to a drinking-house on a sunday thirteenth all the morning at home among my workmen at noon mr creed and i went to the ordinary behind the exchange where we lately were but i do not like it so well as i did so home with him and to the office where we sat late and he did deliver his accounts to us the office being done i went home and took pleasure to see my work draw to an end fourteenth up early and by water to whitehall to my lord and there had much talk with him about getting some money for him he told me of his intention to get the muster master's place for mr pierce the purser 
who he has a mind to carry to sea with him and spoke very slightingly of mr creed as that he had no opinion at all of him but only he was forced to make use of him because of his present accounts thence to drink with mr shepley and mr pinkney and so home and among my workmen all day in the evening mr shepley came to me for some money and so he and i to the mitre and there we had good wine and a gammon of bacon my uncle white mr talbot and others were with us and we were pretty merry so at night home and to bed finding my head grow weak nowadays if i come to drink wine and therefore hope that i shall leave it off of myself which i pray god i could do fifteenth with my workmen all day till the afternoon and then to the office where mr creed's accounts were passed home and found all my joiners work now done but only a small job or two which pleased me very well this afternoon there came two men with an order from a committee of lords to demand some books of me out of the office in order to the examining of mr hutchinson's accounts but i give them a surly answer and they went away to complain which put me into some trouble with myself but i resolved to go to-morrow myself to these lords and answer them to bed being in great fear because of the shavings which lay all up and down the house and cellar for fear of fire sixteenth up early to see whether the work of my house be quite done and i found it to my mind stayed at home all the morning and about two o'clock went in my velvet coat by water to the savoy and there having stayed a good while i was called into the lords and there quite contrary to my expectations they did treat me very civilly telling me that what they had done was out of zeal to the king's service and that they would join with the governors of the chest with all their hearts since they knew that there was any which they did not before i give them very respectful answer and so went away to the theatre and there saw the latter end of the maid's tragedy which i never saw before and methinks it is too sad and melancholy thence homewards and meeting mr creed i took him by water to the wardrobe with me and there we found my lord newly gone away with the duke of ormond and some others whom he had had to the collation and so we with the rest of the servants in the hall sat down and eat of the best cold meats that ever i eat on in all my life from thence i went home mr moore with me to the waterside telling me how kindly he is used by my lord and my lady since his coming hither as a servant and to bed seventeenth all the morning at home at noon lieutenant lambert came to me and he and i to the exchange and thence to an ordinary over against it where to our dinner we had a fellow play well upon the bagpipes and whistle like a bird exceeding well and i had a fancy to learn to whistle as he do and did promise to come some other day and give him an angel to teach me to the office and sat there all the afternoon till nine at night so home to my music and my wife and i sat singing in my chamber a good while together and then to bed eighteenth towards westminster from the tower by water and was fain to stand upon one of the piers about the bridge before the men could drag their boat through the lock and which they could not do till another was called to help them being through bridge i found the thames full of boats and galleys and upon inquiry found that there was a wager to be run this morning so spying a pain in a gully i went into him and there stayed thinking to have gone to chelsea with them but upon the start the wager boats fell foul of one another till at last one of them gives over pretending foul play and so the other row away alone and all our sport lost so i went ashore at westminster and to the hall i went where it was very pleasant to see the hall in the condition it is now with the judges on the benches at the further end of it which i had not seen all this term till now thence with mr spicer creed and some others to drink and so away homewards by water with mr creed whom i left in london going about business and i home where i stayed all the afternoon in the garden reading faber fortunae with great pleasure so home to bed nineteenth lord's day i walked in the morning towards westminster and seeing many people at york house i went down and found them at mass it being the spanish ambassadors and so i go into one of the galleries and there heard two masses done i think not in so much state as i have seen them here to full after that into the garden and walked a turn or two but found it not so fine a place as i always took it for by the outside thence to my lord's and there spake with him about business and then he went to whitehall to dinner and captain ferrers and mr howe and myself to mr wilkinson's at the crown and though he had no meat of his own yet we happened to find our cook mr robinson there who had a dinner for himself and some friends and so he did give us a very fine dinner then to my lord's where we went and sat talking and laughing in the drawing-room a great while all our talk about their going to see this voyage which captain ferris is in some doubt whether he shall go or no but swears that he would go if he were sure never to come back again and i giving him some hopes he grew so mad with joy that he fell a dancing and leaping like a madman now it fell out so that the balcony windows were open and he went to the rail and made an offer to leap over and asked what if he should leap over there i told him i would give him forty pounds if he did not go to sea with that thought i shut the doors and w howe hindered him all we could yet he opened them again and with a vault leaps down into the garden the greatest and most desperate frolic that ever i saw in my life i went to see what was become of him and we found him crawled upon his knees but could not rise 
so we went down into the garden and dragged him to the bench where he looked like a dead man but could not stir and though he had broke nothing yet his pain in his back was such as he could not endure with this my lord who was in the little new room come to us in amaze and bid us carry him up which by our strength we did and so laid him in east bed by the door where he lay in great pain we sent for a doctor and surgeon but none to be found till by and by by chance comes in dr clark who is afeard of him so we sent to get a lodging for him and i went up to my lord where captain cook mr gibbons and others of the king's musicians were come to present my lord with some songs and symphonies which were performed very finely which being done i took leave and supped at my father's where was my cousin beck come lately out of the country i am troubled to see my father so much decay of a sudden as he do both in his seeing and hearing and as much to hear of him how my brother tom do grow disrespectful to him and my mother i took leave and went home where to prayers which i have not had in my house a good while and so to bed twentieth at home all the morning paid fifty pounds to one mr grant for mr barlow for the last half year and was visited by mr anderson my former chamber fellow at cambridge with whom i parted at the hague but i did not go forth with him only gave him a morning draught at home at noon mr creed came to me and he and i to the exchange and so to an ordinary to dinner and after dinner to the mitre and there sat drinking while it rained very much then to the office where i found sir williams both choosing of masters for the new fleet of ships that is ordered to be set forth and pen seeming to be in an ugly humour not willing to gratify one that i mentioned to be put in did vex me we sat late and so home mr moore came to me when i was going to bed and sat with me a good while talking about my lord's business and our own and so good night twenty first up early and with sir r slingsby and major waters the deaf gentleman his friend for company's sake to the victualling office the first time that i ever knew where it was and there stayed while he read a commission for enquiry into some of the king's lands and houses thereabouts that i given his brother and then we took boat to woolwich where we stayed and gave order for the fitting out of some more ships presently and then to deptford where we stayed and did the same and so took barge again and were overtaken by the king in his barge he having been down the river with his yacht this day for pleasure to try it and as i hear commissioner pets do prove better than the dutch one and that that his brother built while we were upon the water one of the greatest showers of rain fell that ever i saw the comptroller and i landed with our barge at the temple and from thence i went to my father's and there did give order about some clothes to be made and did buy a new hat cost between twenty and thirty shillings at mr holden's so home twenty second to westminster and there mr my lord and so about noon i and w Howe by water to the wardrobe where my lord and all the officers of the wardrobe dined and several other friends of my lord at a venison pasty before dinner my lady wright and my lady jem sang songs to the harpsichon very pleasant and merry at dinner and then i went away by water to the office and there stayed till it was late at night before i went to bed the barber came to trim me and wash me and so to bed in order to my being clean to-morrow twenty third this day i went to my lord and about many other things at whitehall and there made even my accounts with mr shepley at my lord's and then with him and mr moore and john bowles to the rhenish wine-house and there came jonas moore the mathematician to us and there he did by discourse make us fully believe that england and france were once the same continent by very good arguments and spoke very many things not so much to prove the scripture false as at the time therein is not well computed nor understood from thence home by water and there shifted myself into my black silk suit the first day i have put it on this year and so to my lord mayor's by coach with a great deal of honourable company and great entertainment at table i had very good discourse with mr ashmole wherein he did assure me that frogs and many insects do often fall from the sky ready formed dr bates's singularity in not rising up nor drinking the king's nor other healths at the table was very much observed from thence we all took coach and to our office and there sat till it was late and so i home and to bed by daylight this day was kept a holy day through the town and it pleased me to see the little boys walk up and down in procession with their broomstaffs in their hands as i had myself long ago gone twenty fourth at home all the morning making up my private accounts and this is the first time that i do find myself to be clearly worth five hundred pounds in money besides all my goods in my house etc in the afternoon at the office late and then i went to the wardrobe where i found my lord at supper and therefore i walked a good while till he had done and i went into him and there he looked over my accounts and they were committed to mr moore to see me paid what remained due to me then down to the kitchen to eat a bit of bread and butter which i did and there i took one of the maids by the chin thinking her to be susan but it proved to be her sister who is very like her from thence home twenty fifth all the morning at home about business at noon to the temple where i stayed and looked over a book or two at playford's and then to the theatre where i saw a piece of the silent woman which pleased me 
so homewards and in my way bought the bondman in paul's churchyard and so home where i found all clean and the hearth and range as it is now enlarged set up which pleases me very much twenty sixth lord's day lay long in bed to church and heard a good sermon at our own church where i have not been a great many weeks dined with my wife alone at home pleasing myself in that my house to begin to look as if at last it would be in good order this day the parliament received the communion of dr gunning at st margaret's westminster in the afternoon both the sir williams came to church where we had a dull stranger after church home and so to the mitre where i found dr burnett the first time that ever i met him to drink with him and my uncle white and there we sat and drank a great deal and so i to sir w batten's where i have on purpose made myself a great stranger only to get a high opinion a little more of myself in them here i heard how mrs brown sir w batten's sister is brought to bed and i to be one of the godfathers which i could not nor did deny which however did trouble me very much to be at charge to no purpose so that i could not sleep hardly all night but in the morning i bethought myself and i think it is very well i should do it sir w batten told me how mr prynne among the two or three that did refuse to-day to receive the sacrament upon their knees was offered by a mistake the drink afterwards which he did receive being denied the drink by dr gunning unless he would take it on his knees and after that by another the bread was brought him and he did take it sitting which is thought very preposterous home and to bed twenty seventh to the wardrobe and from thence with my lord sandwich and hinchinbrook to the lord's house by boat at westminster and there i left them then to the lobby and after waiting for sir g downing's coming out to speak with him about the giving me up of my bond for my honesty when i was his clerk but to no purpose i went to clerk's at the leg and there i found both mr pierce's mr rolt formerly too great a man to meet upon such even terms and there we dined very merry there coming to us captain ferrers this being the first day of his going abroad since his leap a week ago which i was greatly glad to see by water to the office and there sat late sir george carteret coming in who among other things did inquire into the naming of the maesters for this fleet and was very angry that they were named as they are and above all to see the maester of the adventure for whom there is some kind of difference between sir w pen and me turned out who has been in her list the office done i went with the comptroller to the coffee-house and there we discourse of this and i seem to be fond of him and indeed i find i must carry fair with all as far as i see it safe but i have got of him leave to have a little room from his lodgings to my house of which i am very glad besides i do open him a way to get lodgings himself in the office of which i should be very glad home and to bed twenty eighth this morning to the wardrobe and thence to a little alehouse hard by to drink with john bowis who is now going to hinchinbrook this day thence with mr shepley to the exchange about business and there by mr rawlinson's favour got into a balcony over against the exchange and there saw the hangman burn by vote of parliament two old acts the one for constituting us a commonwealth and the other so i forgot which still do make me think of the greatness of this late turn and what people will do to-morrow against what they all through profit or fear did promise and practise this day then to the mitre with mr shepley and there dined with d rawlinson and some friends of his very well so home and then to cheapside about buying a piece of plate to give away to-morrow to mrs brown's child so to the star in cheapside where i left mr moore telling five pounds out for me who i found in a great strait for my coming back again and so he went his way at my coming then home where mr cook and i met and he paid me thirty shillings an old debt of his to me so to sir w pen's and there sat alone with him till ten at night in talk with great content he telling me things and persons that i did not understand in the late times and so i home to bed my cousin john holcroft whom i have not seen many years this morning came to see me twenty ninth king's birthday rose early and having made myself fine and put six spoons and a porringer of silver in my pocket to give away to-day sir w pen and i took coach and the weather and ways being foul went to walthamstow and being come there heard mr radcliffe my former schoolfellow at paul's who is yet a mere boy preach upon nay let him take all since my lord the king is returned etc he reads all and his sermon very simple but i look for new matter back to dinner to sir william batten's and then after a walk in the fine gardens we went to mrs brown's where sir w pen and i were godfathers and mrs jordan and shipman godmothers to her boy and there before and after the christening we were with the woman above in her chamber but whether we carried ourselves well or ill i know not but i was directed by young mrs batten one passage of a lady that eat wafers with her dog did a little displease me i did give the midwife ten shillings and the nurse five shillings and the maid of the house two shillings but for as much i expected to give the name to the child but did not it being called john i forbore then to give my plate till another time after a little more advice all being done we went to mrs shipman's who is a great butter-woman and i did see there the most of milk and cream and the cleanest that ever i saw in my life 
after we had filled our bellies with cream we took our leaves and away in our way we had great sport to try who should drive fastest sir w batten's coach or sir w penn's chariot they having four and we two horses and we beat them but it cost me the spoiling of my clothes and velvet coat with dirt being come home i to bed and give my breeches to be dried by the fire against to-morrow thirtieth to the wardrobe and there with my lord went into his new barge to try her and found her a good boat and like my lord's contrivance of the door to come out round and not square as they used to do back to the wardrobe with my lord and then with mr moore to the temple and thence to greater rakes who took me to arundel house and there showed me some fine flowers in his garden and all the fine statues in the gallery which i formerly had seen and is a brave sight and thence to a blind dark cellar where we had two bottles of good ale and so after giving him direction for my silver side-table i took boat at arundel stairs and put in at milford so home and found sir williams both and my lady going to deptford to christen captain ruth's child and would have had me with them but i could not go to the office where sir r slingsby was and he and i into his and my lodgings to take a view of them out of a desire he has to have mine of me to join to his and give me mr turner's to the office again where sir g carteret came and sat a while he being angry for sir william's making of the mices of this fleet upon their own heads without a full table then the comptroller and i to the coffee-house and there sat a great while talking of many things so home and to bed this day i hear the parliament have ordered a bill to be brought in for the restoring the bishops to the house of lords which they had not done so soon but to spite mr prynne who is every day so bitter against them in his discourse in the house thirty first i went to my father's thinking to have met with my cousin john holcroft but he came not but to my great grief i found my father and mother in a great deal of discontent one with another and indeed my mother is grown now so pettish that i know not how my father is able to bear with it i did talk to her so as did not indeed become me but i could not help it she being so unsufferably foolish and simple so that my father poor man is become a very unhappy man there i dined and so home and to the office all the afternoon till nine at night and then home and to supper and to bed great talk now how the parliament intend to make a collection of free gifts to the king through the kingdom but i think it will not come to much end of may